uh, this is a true story. So I go for this, I go over there first match I shot at the MBSRA at that time over there. And, um, I shoot that match and, um, I broke the world record. So, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. All right, Tate, you ready? Yeah, whatever we're going to do. Are you sure? I'm going to hit you with some tough questions. I got nothing, I got nothing to hide, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm lucky to be here. All right. Well, Larry Tate, thank you for being here. Uh, this is going to be on my channel. Uh, there's so many people, as you know, that are trying to get into the sport. They don't know where to start. They, they, they don't know what to expect. And, of course, you've been there, done that. Uh, so you and I became good friends because of the sport. And, uh, man, we've been friends for a long time now. A very long time. I don't even yeah. know how long. But anyway, so Larry Tate, Huntington Beach, California. Uh, tell us how you got, how'd you get into the sport? Like what, what brought you into the sport? I always had an interest in firearms when I was about seventh, eighth grade. And my brother would take us out and we'd go shoot uh, shotguns. And um, so the, I always had the itch to go shoot. And then um, as time went on, you know, I got married and did all that stuff. And then I got tired of being happy and I got divorced, you know. And then, <laughs> yeah, you know how that goes. I said, I'm out of here. So I divorced her and then... Um, uh, yeah, and so then I went through the whole thing, raising my kids the best I could and all that. And then um, uh, after I got to a certain point, I said, yeah, I'm going to start shooting, you know. So I went out and bought a Ruger um, M77 with a uh, Leupold scope and a Harris bipod, and I got a 243. And it was a Target model. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so I uh, got on the Internet. I always wanted to shoot a 1,000 yards, and there was a – it turned out that the twist rate on that Ruger target model could do a thousand yards for 243. So uh -huh. I got on the internet and I'm a firm believer in that um, you are what the company you keep. And I wanted to learn how to shoot a thousand yards. So I got on the internet and I just Googled like world record holder, you know, and uh, I found Skip, Skip Talbot. So I uh -huh. found his phone number it was on the internet. So I called him and I called up Skip and said, Hey, you know, uh, my name's Larry Tate. I go, you don't know who I am. But I said, I want to learn how to shoot a thousand yards. And um, so, you know, how can you not get good advice from a guy like that, right? So he first his, his first response his response to me was, how'd you get my number? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I found it on the internet. And he said, Well, I gotta get that off of there. <laughs> so but he said, I, I said, what do I got to do? You know, I said, just tell me whatever I got to do. He said, well, first thing you need to do, this was, uh, he goes, go to the California State Midrange. Uh, it's, it was October 3rd, 2003 was the very first match. So I drove the Colinga. I had my Ruger, you know, bipod, and I was shooting, I was shooting Hornaday bullets at that time. And um, I got on the ground and, and the uh, six, 600 yard. And I shot in conditions that probably I did some shots I probably never do after learning what I, <laughs> learning what I've learned now. But it was just pure luck, you know. At, at that point, I I shot a clean like a two hundred um, uh, two hundred seven or two hundred eight. But during that string, um, and my first shot was boom on it. When wow. I turned it, my first shot was like a ten or X, cold bore, right? And it, and I look back at the guy because I don't know. I'm just shooting, right? I'm just doing what Skip told me to do. And so I shoot it, hit a 10 or X, whatever it was. I turned and I said, uh, going for a record. And the guy looked at me and said, are you sure? I go, I go, After one shot? Yeah, my cold bore shot. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, going for a record. He said, okay. Well, I, I cleaned it, you know. Uh, wow. And during, that, and during that string, uh, and this was with a Harris bipod. Wow. I'm, I'm shooting it in uh, – there was a left to right wind and I remember it switched and it a hard switch and was going right to left. And I went, well, you know, I just happened to catch the flags. Right. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to have to just hold over, but uh, about the same side as I was, you know, doping left. Yeah. So I not dope the right, but it's about right, about right. <laughs> Boom, pull it. And it hit like a X or 10. I don't want to fabricate the story, but I hit it. It was it, whatever it was a 10 or X. And that guy, he goes, that was an amazing shot. Because <laughs> he said, I thought you were going to blow it off the target. And then after the match, he said, how'd you do that? 
And I go, I don't know. I just saw it blowing on that side. I go, look about the same on this side. So I held over kind of in that area and pulled the trigger. You know, I got no magic for it. You know, and he was like, what? The? And then the second string, right? The second string goes up. I swear, bingo, I'm on it. I go for record. I shot 10 more. And then I finally dropped the 11th point. Mm-hmm. And I just turned to the guy and said, hey, man, I got to miss at some point. You can't do this forever, you know. <laughs> I had no idea, you know. <laughs> and I remember when I turned the card in, I turned the card in and Jim O'Connell was running the line. Yeah, you know who Jim is. Anyways, Jim Jim O'Connell was there and he handed the card. He got the card and I was staring down there and I saw his head kind of turn and he looked like, because I'm sure I shot the only clean, right? Uh-huh. And he just kind of looked down the line like, what the hell? <laughs> You know, but I don't, I didn't know it was, you know, and I ended up shooting a 577 by, you know, the, you know, the dream was over that first, that first 30 <laughs> shots, you know, but um, yeah, but it was hilarious. And then, uh, can, can you imagine if you had just shot the first string and said, you know, it's not for me, it's way too easy. And then just walked off and never looked back. And then just oh, the yeah. entire life just went on saying, oh, F class, that's way too easy. I tried it. it, it no, no, but I mean, I did with a bipod. <laughs> Uh, but you know that's, that's why that's, imagine he has said, nah, this is just, way too easy. No, I, you know, here I was shooting with, uh, yeah, I, I think my come up was like thirteen. No, I forget what it was. I, I, um, I forget. Um, but it was I, I. I never forgot. October third, two thousand three, is my very first match. So then uh, I go to Sacramento to shoot the uh, uh, long a thousand yard range, right? Thousand yard match, in. Skip's there. Skip pulls up. So I see Skip and said, hey, I walked over to him and said, hey, Skip, I introduced myself to him. And uh, you're nice to meet you, a nice guy, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I said, uh, do me a favor. When you see me shoot, if you see me do any little thing, I don't care what it is. I want you to just get all over me and just hammer me because, you know, I, I, it's not, I don't got an ego. I want to learn how to shoot this thing. And he said, sure, I'll, I'll do it. So I shot my match and my goal was just to shoot one point shoot as good or better than I shot at 600. Cause I, I kind of believe that um, rather than chasing, this is something you tell the new guys, rather than chasing, when you start, when you go down, especially now and you shoot and you see all this competition, if you go up there and look at that board, you're going to get shocked because you're going to see scores up there that are going to say, I'll never get to that. You're going to see a lot of cleans. And if it's a, if the wind's down, it's going to be a ton of them, you know? And um, if you see like one clean and a bunch of other ones, then, you know, the guy that shot the clean had his act going on. Right. So don't try to chase everyone's score. This is what my goal was. My thing was just improve every time I shot. And I knew that over a period of time, I would eventually get in the mix because this doesn't do any good to worry about the guy to your left or the guy to your right or what he's shooting or she's shooting has no bearing on what you've got going on in front of you. So it's between you, the target and the wind and your shooting mechanics and your reloading and all that stuff. It's a, it's a personal issue between you and that target and, and mother nature. So stay focused on just improving yourself and let the, let your progression fall where it falls on that chart because as you get better you will eventually get in the top 25 if you're fortunate enough and next thing you know you're in the top 10 and you go hey if you and, and you know how it is you catch the right relay you can get some separation and if if you know you're down in the pits and the winds are blowing you're going well those guys are struggling out there and you may have just came off the line and it was dead and you was well i got some cushion here and then yeah, you start yeah. worrying about i hope it doesn't happen to me <laughs> But, you know, we all know how that goes. Yeah. You know, sooner or later, you know, you, that's what's great about the sport. You can't pick your wind. You just get down there and you got to shoot and whatever you get, that's your, that's your going. At any rate, um, Skip sees I shoot and I'm getting ready to walk off the line to go get in my truck. I'm getting get ready to go home, right? And <laughs> Skip walks over and grabs me by my arm. I'm carrying my gun. I'm going on my truck. And he says, hey, you come with me. And I said, Oh, okay. So I walk with Skip, and he, this is after the match. Right? I'm getting ready to depart, and we go to the uh, trailer. And in the trailer is Jim O'Connell, uh, Jerry Turney, uh, obviously Skip. He brought me in there, and then uh, Jeff Wise. He, and uh, Skip says to me, um, "Not to, he goes. It's not too often you get to recruit an F-class shooter." You know, he was on the U.S. team at the time, right? And so he says, uh, he goes, it's not too often you get to recruit an F-class shooter. He says, you can shoot. And he said, um, but the first thing I want you to do is you got to sell that rifle. 
you know. And this is the, you know, and I'm looking at him like, are you? <laughs> Your pride procession. What the hell are you talking about? I, you know, I bought this rifle on self for like 500 and some odd dollars, you know. It was like, you know, it was, I bought it at b and It was a, you know, cheap uh, rifle, but it shot. And I said, I'm not selling it. You know, that ain't going to happen. He goes, well, where you're going, you're not going to stand a chance for that thing, you know. So he said, um, you, he goes, I'll build you one or Jeff Wise will build it. And Jeff goes, I'll build it. And I said, that's fine. I'll build one. But you tell me what I got to do because I didn't have a clue what he's talking about, right? I had no idea what this F-class thing was going to be like. And he said, well, he started ripping off bats and, you know, barrels and call this guy. He, he had a list of everybody. And I was just taking notes. You know, mm-hmm. and so I'd call up Krieger, I'd call up Bat, and I'll, oh, yeah, I don't skip, blah, 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 you know, dual triggers, all that stuff. I just ordered everything, and Jeff said, just send it to me. Well, I sent it to Jeff. So Jeff Wise got it, and um, he he built the rifle for me. And by the time he got that rifle built, I was so excited. You know how it is when you get an F-class rifle, and it's brand new, and it's nothing that you ever, you know, I got this, you know, Ruger Mauser action, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I get a, I'm getting a bat. I've never <laughs> even touched a bat before, right? So I had no idea until I got it. But at any rate, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. But the Nationals is coming up in 2004. And that, during that time, that was in Butner. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jeff Weiss calls me and says, I'm not going to have your gun completed by then. So the best thing I can do for you is, you know, you can just get it when you come back. So I was just eager to compete and, you know, go out there and start learning how to do this thing. And I figured, you know, I want to shoot the big matches because the, the sooner you put the pressure on yourself, you can get that monkey off your back, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I said, I'm going. So I loaded up my Ruger 243 with that, you know, Leopold scope and <laughs> six was a six by six and a half by 25 or something <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. And I put that bad boy on there and I flew it. And I got it. I remember Bob Crow, and he was the, he ran the, he was the vice vice captain of the U.S. team, right? So I'm standing in line, and I and I and I hand him my rifle, and Bob says to me, "You can shoot." He goes, "You can shoot two of those if you want, because because <laughs> because it weighed like nine nine eighty five or something like that, like ten pounds." You know? and, and and I just was like, "Well, whatever," you know. This is all I got. You know? So I blowed that thing up and I get on there and it, you know, and that's where I met. Uh, I actually got, I got I actually got teamed up with uh, Cochran trailer and um, uh, his other buddy. Um, I just can't think of his name off the top of my head. Nice guy. Uh, he was there. And then he had a teammate that he shot with him. He's, he named his gang. He named his rifle uh, Mojo. He actually won the 600 yard. I can't think of Jameson or something like that. He won the, the 600 yard nationals that year. Yeah. But that's what I actually shot with Cochran. That's how I met Jeff trailer and, and Cochran. And I had that Ruger, you know, mm-hmm. that gun shot really well. I mean, for what it was competing against, I mean, I actually beat some guys with it. That was shocking for me, but I beat him at, at the 600. I didn't do, it wasn't like I was stomping him at a thousand, you know, <laughs> that, that wasn't going to happen. But, um, but it still was a learning experience. And England was there, you know, and I was looking around and I thought, this is kind of like the little world championship thing for me. Because, you know, I had seen all these flags flying and stuff because a lot of those other countries would show up, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I said, this is great, a good experience for me. And um, by the time I got home, Jeff had finished my uh, my uh, competition rifle. rifle. I, wanted it in, I wanted it in a 243 because I wanted to shoot in a 243 caliber. And so... <laughs> He built it in a two, <clears throat> great gunsmith and a great guy, and he was very helpful for me. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for Jeff, I would have never got where I got because I just listened to him, you know. And um, so he sends me this rifle, and I get it. And you know how it is when you get that first custom-built rifle, man. It's like uh-huh. everything else can take the back seat. I put that thing on my kitchen, on my island, and I pulled that bolt open, and it was like glass. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I said, how do you, <laughs> this is unbelievable. You know, this thing was just, oh, man. I said, I can't wait to shoot this thing. So I remember Skip had told me, um, if you want to work on reading the wind, you know, he says, cause when you shoot F, he was, he was telling, this is what I met him in Sacramento. He says, when you shoot F, you know, they're always marking your targets, pulling it and telling you, so you can always get a constant read on the wind. You know, he's, so he's telling me, shoot, take a look at the, look at the, look at the wind, you know, get a spotting scope and see what you shot in. 
you know. So and then then you you know I'd open up my action and let it cool and get it ready for the next round, put it in there. But I wouldn't ever engage it. I kind of had a sequence that I went through that made sense to me. And so, mm -hmm. um, anyways, I started doing what Skip said. He said, if you really want to see where you're at, try shooting a um, a Pinterest match because you know they just put that target up after you get centered up. They pull it down and then they put it up mm -hmm. and then you just shoot. You know, mm -hmm. ten shot match, right? So I was at the 600 yard uh, nationals. It was my first match shooting that, and he was he used to basically said, you know, shoot for for me, shoot for score because don't try to, you know, hey, if you you've seen them where they just shoot them as fast as they can, well, you don't learn anything when you just center it up and you just hope the wind holds and you just right. faster than a 10:22, you know, done. Oh, I'm good. Well, <laughs> you know, the wind kicks up. You shot a whole really nice group, but it's over in the seven ring. You know, he's saying, read the wind and use it for practice. And so that's what I did. I went over there and tried to practice taking wind, you know, making a wind call and make a shot. I didn't care about my groups. And if I happened to get a good group out of it, then, hey, good for me. I did a good job reading wind. Right. But this is a true story. So I go, for this, I go over there, first match I shot at the MBSRA at that time over there. And, um, I shoot that match and um, I broke the world record. So, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. 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 Wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> what? Yeah, it, was, it was 60 shot. It was 60 shot. And I just did what Skip told me to do. And um, yeah, I came out of that. I came out of that thing with and so I went when I got home, I just sent a message to my to my gunsmith and said, Hey, just want to let you know, you know, thank you very much for the right. Cause he didn't, he didn't know anything. I just got it right to go shoot that yeah, match. Yeah. So I go over there and shoot that match. And it was 2004, I guess. And I said, Hey, you know, Jeff, thank you very much. Appreciate all your help. Blah, blah, blah. By the way, uh, you just set a new world record. You know, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like me, you know, what? Well, yeah. Well, you know, here's this knucklehead from Huntington beach, you know, California you shouldn't even have a rifle. Right. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, but at any rate, those guys at Sac Valley were all great. They were that group over there, really classy guys. They're a lot of fun, and they were always helpful to me. And um, you know, Connell, wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm gonna have to stop you real quick. How how did you develop a load for this thing? Did you know how to? Well, Jeff, why? You know, he was telling me. I, you know, I, I, oh, okay. I, I did load just... testing. Yeah, I did everything he told me. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say, it wasn't for Jeff. I'd be, I'd still be, you know, plucking at steel plates that I used to shoot before I got into competition. I got my Ruger. I'd go out to this uh, range out in San Fernando Valley and they'd have all these metal silhouettes all, you know, from like uh, 200 mm -hmm. out and then it went out to 700 yards. Well, I could shoot, I'd load up all my stuff and I would shoot it and I could hit that deer. They had a deer out there at seven. I could hit that deer all day long in the head. So then I started aiming, trying to hit an antler, you know, because I said, I'm trying to, and after I get tired, yeah. you know how it is, you get these big objects yeah. and you shoot a big steel plate, you go, I can put my gun and shoot it. This is all the bipod. And I hit it and go, so what? You know, I need a score. You know, right. that's what I wanted. I wanted a score so I could challenge myself. Again, I just tried to improve myself. I didn't worry about everyone else, right? So that was my whole goal. And um, <clears throat> so, Anyways, that's how that kind of fanned out. And then I went to competition. That's why I, I tracked down mm -hmm. Skip mm -hmm. and then Skip got me going. So Jeff Wise, you know, work on a load, to, you got to work up a load and blah, 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 blah. And so I did all that. And, um, you know, about loading, turning necks, all that stuff. I mean, you, you know, he, he, he just guided me and um, I just took it and ran. And, you know, I'm kind of an analytical uh, grain counter, you know, I don't, I don't like excuses. I, I, I don't know. I got, if you have to have an excuse, then don't go to the match. You know, in my opinion, you know, I don't, I don't like excuses. I like it to all be on me. And I can tell you one thing, Eric, if you go to any of the matches that I ever, I don't shoot anymore because of my health issues. But if you were to look at any of my matches and your name's above me, you beat me because I never went to a match where I wasn't prepared. I, I did everything I could possibly do. You know, it was all on me. And so it wasn't the gun. It was either the way I handled it or I made a bad wind call because all my guns shot flat. And, I, and I've had multiple barrels. I had like 20 barrels. So I, I had a bunch of them done because I was going to do this all the way through retirement, right? So I, I would just get barrels and have Jeff, you know, do like three, four of them at a time and send it back and I get more, you know, and I do it. So I would just change them out. I learned that from, uh, this was, a, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but I learned that from uh, a brewer. 
you know, I saw a brewer in match once. And he, I got so many stories I could tell you. We could we could go for a long time and that's some okay. Funny stuff. That's okay. Oh my God, I could tell you some funny stuff. But so uh, so so you set the you set the world record in Benchrist for score, correct? Sixty shot. Yeah. Sixty. And shot. then the following, okay. I had the yeah. Go ahead. You have a question. No, no, and they, and they don't. No, no. I'm just trying to kind of get back on the timeline. So, what happens oh. after that? Uh, then I went back and shot another. Uh, I shot another one in uh, uh, 2005, and um, oh, so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. I, I I won that. I I, I won the um um uh, actually a target's hanging up in my room. It was the six, it was a 10 shot. It wasn't the 60 shot ag was the one I set the world record on, but uh, I won the nationals with the, with the 10 shot for that, the 10 shot target. Right. And I was about three eighths of an inch high from, from getting the, I shot a 99 six or something like that. Right. And you know, those are all cold, right? Those are just up, right. up in the air. Right. And I'm trying to make wind calls. And I remember the guy came up to me from the target and he said, he goes, Tate, he goes, I thought, he goes, I thought you were going to do it, man. I said, what? He said, your last shot went just out of the 10 ring. And, you know, and I vividly remember this. This is no lie. I remember putting the, you know how sometimes you get like a vertical or one will drop. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what? Stuff like this happens. I'm going to take a chance. You know what I mean? You, you know, so I aimed a little bit, I aimed high on the, above the just above the top yeah i aimed above just above the the x ring and it pushed mm -hmm. it right out the top of the 10 ring by about three eighths of an inch if that i got the target in my room mm. and i looked at that target and i go if i would just would have held center but if i'd aimed low on the other hand if i was rolling the dice right if i aimed low i'd have probably put it right in the right right on above the x so yeah. either way you know i you know i'm not gonna get greedy you know no excuses that's what i did but I learned from that. It's probably best rather than guess is I should have just looking back. I should have trusted everything I had held my held my original point of aim that I was holding. And I should have just shot it and didn't compensate for it and let my reloading do its thing and let the condition let me miss the condition. Don't try to out guess it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so that, and I think that that was my mistake for sure. But at any rate, it was a good experience. That's what I used out of bench rest. And then from there, uh, I just transferred over to F Open, you know, because that's what I was really trying to go after. And I was using that, uh, that um, the bench stuff for to practice because I wanted to you know, see how good I could read the wind. And then, you know, the U.S. team fell into place and all that stuff. So that got just, you know, how that is when you're doing, you know, that's just a lifetime commitment to that, you know, that what it takes to get involved in that. But I, I never had excuses for any matches. I, I don't, I don't like excuses. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, um, you know, you know how I reload, you know, how I do a lot of stuff. So I don't, I did the big test, like you saw the, the primer tests and all that stuff. I, I did all that prior before we went to England in 09. Um, and then I shared it with everybody. I, I wasn't one of those guys that tried to like, you know, play, I got a secret. That's not good, you know. So, you, you should be trying to <clears throat> well, you know me. I'm the same way. <laughs> um, That's a good thing. You know, you should be able to try to help people. So, between 2005, 2009, getting some F class matches, is that what you're doing? Like, you just uh, getting, two, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I was shooting, I was shooting F open. Um, I'm trying to remember all the matches I shot. I, I traveled, uh, but also, I remember I went to Iowa with that Ruger, because <laughs> now I had a light gun, right? Because I had the heavy gun now that oh. I had that Ruger. So that was my light gun. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take my new gun. And I went to an IBS match up in um, Pella, Iowa. Mm -hmm. that I, they were shooting over cornfields. So I flew that, both them things. You know, here I am with this Ruger. And that thing had a trigger pole on it. It was like, I don't know. It was up there. you know. <laughs> so, but at any rate... Uh, I get over there at Pella, and uh, that's where I bump into. I didn't know it at the time. I could send you the video, but it, I got I was shooting videos and stuff, and I saw um, Shaheen there, you know. And I watched Bill. <clears throat> I watched him shoot, you know, and it was a blur, you know. And I, you know, and I get it. That's what they do, but I, that's not what I really wanted to do. I wanted to, 
you know, but I was there to shoot the the bench like they did, but I try to still do it the way that I, you know, try to read the wind and all that the best I could to learn. But uh, Don Nagel, I had the video running and Don Nagel walks. I didn't know Don at the time, Mm -hmm. but Don goes walking by, you know, and, and I'm just, you know, so when I digging through this stuff later on, after I get to know him, I said, Hey, you know, I think I got a video of you. <laughs> so me and I sent it to Don and him and me, him and I in Pella, Iowa, that was great. But, um, at any rate, it, it was, it was great. And, uh, I got my, I got killed over there. I got just hammered, you know, those guys in IBS, those guys are just, you know, next level. They set the rifle down and then it goes, and then, you know, <laughs> it's over. that's it. You go, well, what happened? He goes, that was, that was, that was my 10 shots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel doesn't even have time to get hot. You know, it's just over. That's you funny because it almost makes sense. It almost makes sense. <laughs> well, it's the truth. But I mean, I, but I didn't load like that. So when I was loading, guys are, you know, they're passing out. They're, Is this guy going to shoot that thing or... You know, what are you doing oh, to that thing? Oh, man. That's so, all it's going to get stuck in there. You know? <laughs> so, so, so at what point do you just go full time into F class? Um, well, I think I was fully committed to F class um, when I started. When I walked off that line at 600, I was just doing what Skip was telling me mm-hmm. about shooting the bench. So, you know, when I went and broke the world record, I'm thinking, well, hell, I, that was pretty good. You know, I'm going to try to go back and try it again. And I almost got another one. But um, again, you know, this is the SAC guys, SAC Valley guys are great. And uh, Pete White and Gary Childs and Ed Eckhoff, you know, there's a bunch of them that were just all real helpful to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I was always an F-class guy, you know, but okay. what's so funny about the whole thing was I initially wanted to do FTR, not knowing it was FTR. I wanted to shoot off a bipod. But the only reason I went to F open was because Skip, because he said, you know, he said, this is where you're going to go. And I'm just looking at him because he's a world record holder. And this guy's, you know, he's, I believe he's not, you know, on a 50 caliber bench, you know, bench mm-hmm. rest. Mm-hmm. He's member number one, I believe. Wow. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm just, this guy, when he says something, I'm listening, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I was just doing what he said. And he said, get a red, you know, have to do all this stuff. So I, that's why I got into F open. I initially was going to do a bipod, mm-hmm. but, um, but, you know, I ended up going with the front rest hernia bit, you know, mm-hmm. carrying all that extra weight around, but that's okay. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> so, so then, so then you have to try out for the U S team, right? You don't just say, Hey, I'm on the U S team. You had to try out. How did that go? Well, uh, how that all happened was when I was shot in Butner, when I had that, you know, Crone made that comment to me, you know, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. You can shoot two of these if you want. I didn't shoot all that great, but I knew when I walked off that line, I said, you know, I can shoot this. I can shoot with these guys. I just need to get the gun. I need to get a good rifle to see where I'm at because I'm shooting this $500 rifle. And um, mm-hmm. so when I got that bench rest, or when I got my F open gun, well, when I went and shot it and I, I won the nationals with it, I knew I could, I, I could do this. Well, there was a memo that came out. Um, Wait, when you say you won the nationals, you talk about, the I was a, well, I broke the national? record. I won the nationals for the 600. Okay. I mean, kind of went hand in hand. Right. So, um, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> what happens here? Oh, there was a, uh, I'm watching the, you know, uh, F open stuff. Wait, wait, internet. wait, wait, let me, let me, let me, I, I hadn't even processed that. So you, your first time shooting, Bench rest. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't your first time, but the yeah, first time shooting yeah. with that new rifle. Yeah, you, that was first, you won no, the first national time championship. The first time I ever shot bench rest. <laughs> That's true. The you first shot, time I ever shot broke, bench rest. Was, you broke. You broke the world record and you won the nationals. Right, well, I had to go hand before, hand. Yeah, That's, makes sense. Yeah, I, that was my, <laughs> that was my first <laughs> bench rest. <match. laughs> That's crazy, Tate. Oh, well, I just, okay. I just, now. So anyways, yeah. I'm going, I'm going on the internet cause you know, uh, my gunsmith's telling me, you know, you can look on the, that six BR thing and you know, those are sites to look at and this is all Cause I didn't know any of this stuff. Right. And, um, so I get on there and I'm looking around and then the word comes out that the, you could try out for the U S team. Well, when I, oh, I gotta go back, when I left North Carolina, um, I was telling my brother, you know what? I said, I'm going to try out for the U S team. Cause I saw some of these, cause Cochran and then were talking about the U S guys are here at, uh, 
at the nationals and you know team burger and all that you know all those big dogs you know and actually uh um larry and uh Ber burger um brewer won it that year 2004 mm -hmm. he was a national champion and then um uh let's see who else was there i'm trying to think oh um jj i think jj Conway. Came there, yeah he was there mm -hmm. and so um I said, you know what? I go, I told my brother, I said, I'm going to try out for the U.S. team. My brother goes, what? <laughs> I'm standing here with this Ruger, you know. <laughs> I said, I, I said, I can shoot with these guys. I just need to have, I need to go apples to apples, you know. So, um, and I said, I'm getting mine, you know, built. So once I get it, I'm going to do it. So then I started looking for it. And then uh, um, Bob um, Block they were having the tryouts. So he had a thing where you had to, you know, sign this waiver thing and you were going to try out for the team and all this stuff and be committed and all that. And I remember I got the form and I signed it all out and said, I'm going to do it. I'll go to all the tryouts. And to be honest with you, that what a great memory that, that, that whole trip. Um, I think I signed up in 2006 and from 2006 to 2009, and we did all the, we did all the tryout stuff. And uh, uh, <laughs> there's some funny stories in that too. <laughs> I met some fun people. I mean, uh, that's where I met Mike Downey and then all those guys, you know. Um, but anyway, um, so to 2006, I just sent the form in and said, I'm going to try out for this team, you know. And, and Bob said, Well, uh, were you going to, we want you to shoot a 6'5, you know, 284s, we want you to shoot. And, and at that time, uh, I was using Sierra uh, bullets, you know, match Kings. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we're being sponsored by burger. And we said, would you shoot burger? I said, I'll shoot whatever you want me to shoot. I'm not, you know, I'll make it shoot. You know? So I, next thing you know, I told the gunsmith, I need six, five, two, 84, blah, 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 blah. And do you want a tight neck? Yeah. I want a tight neck, all this kind of stuff. I think it was two ninety two, And, um, I put down three thousands neck tension. So what I dialed in. So I loaded around two eighty nine, I guess. And then, uh, I was real nitpicky on all that stuff because I knew, I knew that all my prep work was so important to maintaining good vertical. And um, mm -hmm. and I know I'm shooting against these U.S. guys, and I, I see all these. You know how it is? You see Brewer and Bach and Bartholomew and Murphy and all these big name guys, and you know, and you know, you admire all of them, right? Because the guys are all just they're killing everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> so and, and and I admire. I think it's great, you know. So I'm, so I I would like turn my necks, and this is no lie. When I turn the neck on it. I, it took me four minutes. I timed everything. So I had an idea how long it took me to do a full round. Because I, you know, between bullet sorting and all the stuff, mm -hmm. and flash holes, primer pockets, and neck turning and all that stuff. I'd spend four minutes on each neck. It sounds crazy, but I didn't, I didn't run it through quick. I had that Sinclair, uh, you know, wall thickness. Mm -hmm. And I would measure, I'd measure all four, every single one of them. I'd measure all four all the way around. And if I found anything that was off, I put it back in. I just didn't care because I said, I only have to do it once. Right. So to me, I'd rather do the labor. And so, and then I'm going out with shooting against these guys. And um, so long story short was, you know, being real methodical, got it all to work. And um, then we, the other part about that U.S. team tryout, so much fun because everywhere you went, no matter when you got on the line, you know how this goes, no matter where you look left or right, there's quality shooters everywhere. You just go, yeah. this is just so exciting. You don't have to go look for, you don't have to go look for talent and competition. It's right there. You don't have to worry about them. You hope they show up. They're there, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the trip, the whole, the whole experience. And so, um, we get out to, uh, uh, this was so funny because this is how, this is how we got a, a little team thing going. We we're playing, we we're shooting over at uh, Lodi. And um, I got, you know, California knucklehead, right? So I show up over there, you know, ba da da da. Hey, what's going on? And, you know, I don't know anybody. And I get on, <laughs> when we shoot the match, it took, long story short on this part was I won the Palma match, right? Okay. And, and, and I shot like 63. 63 X's. You can look it up on that. You'll see it out there. I think it was 68, 63, whatever X. I had a really good X count and I won one of the Palma matches. And, um, Morris tells me later, he said, Tate, you know, uh, 
well, we did the tryout. Then after that, we go do the tryout, right? Well, I get on the ground. He, he got all of us together. And uh, the guys that are going to try out for the team, first try out, Lodi, Wisconsin. <laughs> and <clears throat> we're at the thousand yard line. And Mid says to me, Mid says to the group, okay, who's going to go first? And I figured, hell, I'll go first because I'm, you know, like who's going to got to step up. So I said, hell, I'll go first. I just want to see him. You know, I'm not afraid to go first. So I get on the line. I put all my stuff down there and I just, you know, boom, get everything ready to go. <laughs> And uh, he says, he looks down at me, he says, okay, Tate, I want you, he goes, I want you to shoot, uh, he goes, uh, hold center. I go, okay, I hold center, pull the trigger. True story, target comes down, target comes up, miss. I look up at mid, mid looks down, mid, mid looks down at me and he goes, because this is a tryout. <laughs> He looks at me. That's what he did. He's looking at me with because <coughs> it's not his problem. I, <laughs> he, yeah, <laughs> it's true. You're trying out. <laughs> yeah, it's all on me. And 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 he just yeah, he made that look like you know, you know, what are you gonna do? You know. And I looked at him. I said, I. And you know, let me tell you something. I learned something about me. If I was gonna crumble, that would have been the moment. You know what I mean? First shot, yeah. U.S. team in front of everybody. I'll go first. <laughs> and you know you what I mean? I didn't even hit it. Nothing. And, and, and then mid in front of everybody, God and everybody, mid says, you know, you know, what, you know, what are you he could do? care less. I'm on the team. You know, he's, I, he's saying, I'm on the team, brother. You know, you think I'm going to put you on the line? So, so uh, I looked up at him. I said, just give me a minute, mid. And I just sat there for a minute and I thought, and you know what it was, Eric? 800. I had nine. 900. <clears throat> I had my 900 line vertical on there. And, and, I, and I just sat for a while because we just came from the nine. I said, what the hell happened? And then it all of a sudden hit me. I said, I got it. Dialed up four. And then the rest of it's history. Then I just went, bam. And I said, it's over. And then we just <clears throat> didn't. It was over. Then I just, you know, shot well. But um yeah, at that moment, I learned. I when I walked off the line, said if I was ever going to crumble yeah. and just give the sport up and walk away, it'd have been there because I would have just been a mess, you know. And um, <laughs> but I didn't. I held it together, and then yeah, yeah. But mid was hilarious because hey, I'm, I'm the coach, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so oh, we're so back. Cool. I had to laugh, Morris. <clears throat> I had a lot of fun with Morris. Morris was a lot of fun during that time. Yeah, he was something else, but. Uh, we became really good friends and we chuckled and had a good time. And I'm in my hotel room. This is after we had tryouts and um, I got a knock at the door and uh, Dean says, Hey, we, uh, Downey, Downey told me later. Uh, he said, Hey, you better go get that Tate guy because you know, he just shot like 63 X's, you know, someone's going to grab him. You better go get him. You know? Cause no one knew who I was. You know, I was right. it's just a new guy in the block. Right. So Dean comes over knocking my door and says, Hey, Tate, come on. We, you know, we want to put our own team together. He says, I talked to Bach and we want to have our own, you know, put a team together, blah, 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 blah. And we want to be on it. So, so I go over there and meet Mike, 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 you know how Mike is, you know, Mike's cool as cucumber and all that stuff. Easy going, good competitor, all that stuff. So I said, sure, I'll shoot with you guys. And, and then we're talking before we go to, before we go to dinner. And I said, uh, I said, this is going to be a lot of fun. I said, I hope, you know, hope you all make the team. That'd be great, you know. And Morris looks at me and he goes, what are you talking about? Then he says, you're going to be on the team. He said, you just got done beating everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, how can you not get on the team? I said, I don't know. This is just a tryout. It doesn't mean it's over yet. You know, I mean, nothing's in the bag until it's, until it's over, right? And, right. You still got to shoot the 20th shot, brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, you're good at 15, but, you know, you still got – five more to go yeah. before we're going to pull the plug on that you big know, difference that big difference between oh. 15 and 20. yeah it was, i was thinking it was our first tryout there was a long way to go we weren't done yet you know? yeah so and i knew that but at any rate it all worked out and, and uh, so we got on the team and then um all this you know, we all made it but uh, a lot of fun and i got some mike downey stories that are just funny just oh god what a character <laughs> In, oh, Mike uh, Downey. Mike Downey is the one that took me under his wing when I started. You know, I. Yeah. Mike Downey was my mentor. I mean, he. Man, oh, he's he great. Helped me tremendously. Oh, 
let me tell you what a competitor. You know what was great about Mike? He is a, um, I call him a gamer. I can tell you right now, and I mean <clears> this, <throat> you, could, you could call him up and say, Mike, we're going to put you on the U.S. team. And I believe this. And you could say, and if he said, okay, I'll, I'll shoot. That guy's going to come prepared because he's he'll he refuses to give up. He just will not give you nothing but 100. percent And um, I watched him when we were in England. This was so funny. <laughs> we get there, we're all excited, right? Well, all my equipment. This is the, this is the world championship, right? This is the world championship. This is 2009. 2009. We packed up. I sent over 720 rounds to that. They want us to bring so I you know in these little 20 pack things we packed them up in those military cans at any rate we I we send all our stuff get at the burger they ship it over there we get all our packages and they put us in these bunker bins these guys in 2009 but let me tell you something about Bisley if you ever get a chance to go shoot Bisley England go don't miss that make that a bucket list competition shoot the Imperials and if the worlds are there shoot the worlds it is what an event, man. The weather is so unpredictable. I, I can go on about all this stuff, and, and it was just a memory I'll never forget. But uh, we get over there. I don't get I don't get my uh, all my stuff, so I can't compete in the first couple of days because I'm still waiting for them to ship over. They put my luggage, I think, sent it to Hawaii on its own vacation. You know, it's over there laying out in the sun. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying, hey, pal, I need some stuff over here, you know. And then Mike's yeah. telling me, ah, oh, don't worry about it. You know, Mike, don't worry, Tate. It'll be okay. He's, he goes, uh they make good stories out of stuff like this. You know, you don't get your gun and then you win, you know, that kind of stuff. I said, Hey, I don't want to make a story. I want to shoot. <laughs> you know, you've got all your stuff. You know, I'm walking around with a gun, but I don't have, you know, certain parts of my equipment. I'm like, well, geez, you know? So at any rate, um, we got this, they put us in this bunker bin and it's like a rectangle shaped shoe box. It's divided up into like eight quarters. Right. And there's, there's two mm-hmm. cots. They're elevated. You can stuff all your luggage underneath it. Walls are paper thin. I mean, you can hear people snoring. I mean, it was just craziness. And Mike says to me, they were, it was so tight. He says, you know something, Tate? He goes, uh, I, put, I couldn't believe I got all my stuff underneath the bed. And he got his. And, and we set our presses up and everything. You know, I can't believe we did what we did. And Mike comes out of the bathroom and he says to me, he says, you know something, Tate? He said, I've never been able to do this before, but I did it here. I said, I had one foot in the bathtub. One foot in front of the seat, and you could still go to the bathroom if I could flush the toilet. I thought, you know, he's right, because you could do all of it right there. That's how tight it was. So I step out. Uh, this is going on a day or two long, but I step outside to get some fresh air, right? And this guy and his wife pulls up in this car, and the window's down on the passenger side. And she says, uh, and Mike, has, Mike was just starting to walk to the to where I was standing outside that bunk. And um, the girl says, the lady says, she's an older woman. She says, excuse me. She says, are those, are those loose? And Mike had just stepped out. He says, oh, no, no, we just live here. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, (laughs) and, and And no one said a word. I mean, we, I looked at him and we didn't laugh, but I, she just looked at us like, Guys are, wow. And then he just drove away, you know, and um, <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, my God. But here's another, one thing about Mike. I'm going to tell you about great roommate, you know, and um, we had um, he had shot the 300 yard match in the Imperials. Right. Mm-hmm. And he cleaned it. Right. And those Imperials, which I'm going to talk about something about those Imperials, because I watched some of your videos on that V match thing you did which I think is a great idea, by the way. Um, but at any rate, uh, he comes back and he wins. He cleans it. He wins the gold medal. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people shooting. It was 140th uh, <clears throat> real meeting match over there, 2009. You can look it up. And he cleans it. And I think they had him shoot like five extra shots in case there's a tie. So he, he buries all of them, right? So he wins the gold medal. So then Mike comes back. He goes and shoots another match because they're all spread out at different times throughout the day. He shoots another 300 match and wins that. So now he walks in the trailer, you know, he's got two gold medals, 300. I'm thinking, God, Mike, and he's thinking, you know, I'm on fire. It's, you know, they can't stop me, man. You know, yeah. 
stuff is rolling. The EMD show is going. I think they, he didn't like this too much, but they kind of they kind of called him Mad Dogs, what they nicknamed him out there in England. <laughs> and so we were we were in cart number one, so they called us the Mad Dogs. Because it's right? <clears throat> Well, it started mad, yeah, because they didn't do, yeah, they called him Mad Dog, and then we were in cart number one, so they called us Mad Dog and Tater. And so they're like, oh, they are Mad Dog and Tater. So, so that was kind of a joke. So he goes out and he shoots a thousand yard match, and he comes back and he's, he, I guess his gun just, he has a tuner on there. I think he got the tuner from you, by the way. Um, you remember that big round one he had? Well, it was, yeah. His name was I remember. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was not the one you have now. You just yeah, yeah, it's it a, out yeah, now, but it was a different one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So he had that one on there. He walks in the he walks into the room because we shot all the you know we were shooting kind of the same times. But he comes walk, he comes in the room with his rifle and he throws his rifle down on the bed. And I go, what's wrong with you, Mike? You know, he said my gun shot like you know crap. He just didn't shoot well at all at a thousand. He said, you know, I said, what are you nuts? I said, you just you you just won two gold medals. I said, you you beat every. I mean, it wasn't like he shot against a hundred people. I said, Mike, you, this is the the world, England, you know, this thing was Imperials. Yeah, well, it was prior to the world. So this is their uh, Imperials. Yeah. This is a this is a big thing, you know. And I recommend doing it, man. If you go, go shoot the Imperials for sure. And um, he goes, I gunshot like shit. And he goes, I, I just, I said, you just want two gold medals. He says, so what? I'm the king of point blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's 300 yards. It's, three, it's 300 yards, and he's calling it point blank. <laughs> I said, were you crazy? But that's how competitive he is. And so he, he went, to his credit, he was so mad. He went out and he said, I got to go jog. He, he he stripped down, put on running shorts, and he went for a run to run off his anger, I guess, his frustration. Yeah. And he came back and he said, you know what, we're going to go. And he, he went back to the, the – the, they had a range over there, this 200-yard range, right adjacent to – the 100 yard range, which is nuts. I think I sent you a video of that. It's mm-hmm. like open. The 100 guys are on, on your left side in front of you while you're shooting 200. And I'm not lying. I was like, I go, do you just see what's going on here, Mike? I mean, the guys are off to your left and you're shooting right beside them. You know, bullets are flying. Yeah. But he went down there and he worked on his. I went down in the pits and, and, um, uh, well, first off, he shot, and I just kept handing him bullets and seating for him. And then I went down to the pits, and then I was pulling for him. And he just worked on his tuner, I guess, and got it uh, dialed in. And then uh, he's just a real competitive guy. He just refuses to, you know, which is speaks volumes about him. But at any rate, uh, he ended up shooting on the Rutland team, and uh, you know, he we won the gold medal. You know, me and um, I shot with him, and um, it was you, Gosnell. David Gosnell. And- uh, was it Morris? Dean was a captain. Uh, I shot. Um, trailer? Trailer uh, was there? No, no, trailer. No, he was the, on the Rutland team. It was um, David Gosnell, David Bailey, me, and oh, okay. um, Mike Downey. Downey? Uh, Mo, here's another story. I can tell you an unbelievable story about that match. Uh, you know, it never on stopped. The, by the, <clears throat> the, the, no, the I, tuner, uh, Mark Farr made the tuner for him. Mark oh, it was Farr. Mark Farr? Okay. Yeah. But anyway, keep going. I got to tell you, I got to tell you this story about, um, about what happened. Mike, Mike was glad he could room with me because I had this, my neck would fit in his gun so he could shoot my ammo. He, he, t- he we talked about this on the phone oh, before okay. we even went to England. He said, Hey man, if something goes wrong, we can even swatch, switch ammo. At least we'll be able to have put something on paper, you know? So I said, well, that makes sense to me. I'm good with it. So this is honestly got truth. I'm not lying. Strike me with lightning. The only time, the only time that I loaded extra ammo when I'd go shoot a match was this one day. I loaded up. I said, I'll just, you know how you seat them before you shoot. So I seated a bunch of extra ones just so I had them. And I'm laying on the line, getting ready to shoot this match. And I, I get ready and I look over my shoulder and there's Mike standing there. He says, hey, Tate. I said, what? <laughs> he, goes, he goes, he goes, can you believe this? He goes, I forgot my bullets. He goes, do you have any? he goes, I swear to you, he goes, do you any? he goes, do you have any extra ones? I said, you know, believe it or not, I do. And, and that, in those matches, you shoot like 12 or 13 or you have oddball numbers. So I gave him whatever he needed because I had extra ones. And he went and shot my ammo, didn't shoot as well in his gun, but at least he got something on paper. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, that was one thing he did. But during the Rutland Cup, we're shooting in that match. And they stuck us at the high end there's 50 
there's 50 lines there. We're shooting like 47, 48, something like that. We're way up at the top, you know. And if you ever look at Bisley, it's got stair steps down. So the guys that are shooting at the high end numbers, you're up in the flags, man. And the guys down at the bottom end, they're down on the ground. So if you get those lower numbers, you're obviously better off, right? But, I mean, the way to do it is go up to the top, take a wind reading, and then walk down to the bottom and go, hey, I can tell what the flag velocity is. <laughs> but at any rate, um, Mike shows up. We're shooting the one string out there. And um, Mike pulls up and says, hey, I forgot my ammo. <laughs> <laughs> he turns around, he hauls ass back to the, you know, go get his ammo, and he shows back up. And... Um, Wait, is this the second time rained. or is it the same time? This is a different uh, oh, the the, different. oh no, the Rutland match was all the, towards the end. But he forgot. So he, 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 he did it twice. <laughs> he did it twice. He got everything packed up there and forgot to put it for whatever reason, how he forgot to not bring that. I'll never know. But um we had to haul ass back to the trailer or to the you know, we were staying and get his ammo and come back. But to uh, I gotta tell you this story. To the credit of uh, Michelle and Nancy, because Michelle was, uh, Nancy was doing the wind calls and Michelle was sitting in the back, right? They're working together. And the wind, and one thing about England, man, it rains. I learned this real quick. The sun will be out and then it'll start raining. So, you know, we were there for like almost two weeks, I guess it was two week period. So I learned that real quick after the first day or two, I just left my rain gear on because you could be shooting in the middle of the, last, middle of the match and all of a sudden start raining. And you go, what the hell? And then you got, everything's getting wet. So you just, I just was prepared for it all the time. But it, it started, it was raining and wind wind was blowing its tail off. And and Nancy says, I'm shooting. And she says, uh, she says, Larry, I want you to hold up, you know, hold. And I'm holding like five, five and a half left, right? Left five and a half. We're way off. Yeah, almost off the and frame. We're way out. And she says, just, she says to me, this is swear to God troops through she says just stop right we're gonna take a break we wait like i don't know seven minutes eight whatever it's a long time you know it, you know how it is when you're on the line and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting you think, god you know it's unbelievable so you know i'm waiting for a you know a call that's going to be you know left one you know you're waiting for a condition right 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 you know, i think you're going to come you're going to try to wait for it to die down so you can get back closer to that tin ring right somewhere in that area, you know, give me, you know, two and a half or something. So I'm laying on the ground there and she says, okay, Larry, she says, uh, this is Nancy. She says, okay, get ready, put it, put around in again. So I put one in there and I close it. She says, are you ready to shoot? I go, yeah. She says, give me a left five and a half. I go, what? what? You know, so, you know, I shot it and I am not lying. It pinwheeled that thing. And I remember I looked over at Nancy and I just said, where do you people come from? Because who who does that stuff? <laughs> Nancy does. <laughs> well, I just I'm just saying though, you know, I <clears throat> I'm shell shocked, man, because I, you know, if I'd have been me in that chair, I'd have waited until you know sun came up, the thing was down, and it was zero. I said, whole center. <laughs> Put your no wind zero on there, brother. <laughs> that would have been me. <laughs> but, you know. So, oh, so tell me your story about your shot. Your first was it your first shot that, that you that you shot at, at you know you you get to Beasley, England, and then you're you're trying to shoot your first long range shot, and and then you you make your uh, you have a really funny story about that first shot. Oh, that you oh, took. oh, uh, oh! No, that was in uh, that was in Ireland. Uh, uh, oh, was it? Ireland? Yeah, that was in, that was in, no, that was a Creedmoor. Yeah, I shot did that. That oh wow. You know, well, you know how the wind was going out there. Yeah, wind was going crazy out there. It was 2011, I guess. 11. And, I was um, there with you. Oh, that was great. Yeah, what a time we had, me, you, and oh Nick. man, that it fun? was amazing. It was amazing. So, anyway, yeah, so I, you're I, in England. I, okay, I'm jumping, you know, jumping around. I gotta tell you Sorry. about that. I gotta tell you about the Creedmoor one. Okay, <laughs> so well, we're in we're in England, um, and uh, oh, you were in England. I wasn't. I was just getting into. I had just gotten into F class because that's how, I had just met Mike Downey, and. Uh, and then, uh, right. you know, I had just met this guy, right? And, and Mark Farr, Mark Farr was the one that's kind of helping me. And then I was, I was really taken into this F class thing, and I kept asking mm -hmm. questions. And Mark Farr goes, "You need to call Mike Downey. He, he's the one you want to talk to." And I'm like, "I don't even know the guy." Like, I, he goes, "Just call him. He'll, he'll." he'll. <laughs> And I did, and and he did. You know, I remember we had we had lunch together, and I mean the guy was just amazing. But anyway, uh, 
I didn't know he was on the U.S. rifle team. He's the type of guy that he won't say anything, right? He, he just kind of, right. he just goes and and makes everybody uh, hurt, <laughs> and then he walks away. Uh, yeah, he's a competitive guy. But that, sure. that then I found out he went to the to the world championship. But so anyway, I'm I'm just now getting into the game at this point. Uh, about 2008 is when I got in. So anyway, so you guys are in England shooting the Rutland Cup. And uh, you guys end up winning that, right? Yeah, we shot the well. We also shot the international team. I shot on the international team, which was really uh, uh, what was fun about that international match. That was for the Imperials, right? Mm -hmm. And what Bach said was, "We're going to take the top four shooters up to you know up to the point when they had the international match. Um, who's ever the top four? Those will be the four that get to represent the United States. The person in fifth will be the captain. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how that worked out. So um long story short i was like third so i got to shoot on that international match which was i was kind of proud of that because it was just it was all based off performance, performance right yeah. yeah 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 so um and um so the shooters on that and that international team was uh trailer um jim murphy um myself and shiraz mm -hmm. and um we all shot we were the four and um you know we we won the gold on that too and um that was a lot of fun um great experience again you know and uh and jeff cochran was the captain so he you know he played back roll with the all the headgear and stuff and mm -hmm. um we worked all well together and um i shot anchor i was the last guy and it all worked out we we, we did the whole ball of wax and it was a great memory for sure. And uh, then we went on and we shot the, then we, after that, then we shot the Rutland cup and then we won the gold in that. So, you know, I always tell Downey, I said, Hey, you know, when we went to England, we walked out of there with, you know, our, our group, me and Mike, we walked out with five gold medals, you know, that's yeah. what we had. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we worked out pretty well. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, I was I was very blessed, very lucky. And, yeah, so in uh, fortunate. You said uh, in about six years, right? O three was your first match. I started in 03, and I think I shot my last match because of all my health issues, which you're well aware of, was uh, in eighteen. And I was lucky I even got through that. So but, fifteen years. Um, yeah, I did fifteen years of it, and 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 even at this point, uh, it, rather than sell my stuff, you know, I decided that I was going to give it to you know, give it to somebody who would use it and appreciate the, the history behind my barrels and my gun mm -hmm. and uh, give it to somebody who would uh, use it for what it was designed for. <clears throat> and I have a nephew whose name's Kevin Shepard. He's 35. Mm -hmm. the kid can shoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen him shoot a long time ago when I first started shooting. So I just came back from Montana a month ago and I brought him up a rifle with four barrels and I'm leaving actually tomorrow or Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm giving him that, you know, the gun I shot in England and all that stuff. Wow. That that one rifle I have, it broke a record with and all that stuff. I'm giving him that plus seven barrels. Wow. Um, I'm giving him everything I have. It's all 6.5 related. They're all brand new and rest bag. I mean, uh, chronograph, um, bullets, brass, primer. I mean, everything. I'm, you know, he's getting it all. And um, uh, I think he's going to do really well. I took him out month ago and he shot we spent two days we spent two days shooting at the range up there in montana and i had this gun i called my fun gun it's a really nice gun it's got a million a5 stock on it and i took my 28 i all 28 inch barrels i cut them to 22 after they wouldn't shoot and rechambered them and put them on that remington action on that mm -hmm. on that a5 with a, a night force 8x32 and 56 and it shoots and so I, I uh, loaded up, I had 300 rounds. I brought a box of hundred and we spent the two days out there at the range. And I just kind of showed them how to shoot the sequence. Cause I had a sequence I would go through, you know, I don't like to engage around, not unless I'm going to send it down range. I don't, I don't like to put it in there. So I'd always just, you know, after I shot around, I'd open up that action, put, put a round in there and just get it started. But then I then I'd go to my spotting scope. And if I knew the condition was what I wanted to shoot in, then I would engage it because if it got to where I wasn't going to shoot it, I was already looking at the wind, right? So I would never engage that round. I just let it sit there. 
but I knew that when the target was down, I'm looking, and if, if I'm flags or whatever, if that condition is what I want, that round is going in the chamber. I'm locking it down there. And as soon as that target coming up, I'm off the spotting scope. I'm on the target coming up and I'm pulling it. And as soon as that as soon as that round goes, out comes a brass, a new one comes in. I, I push it in about 50% and I'm on this, you know, then I'll get down on the scope again. And mm -hmm. if the condition's holding, you know, at that point, if it's holding, you're playing the chase the spotter bit, you know, you're just, you're just getting it, you know, wherever you're yeah. at. Yeah. But if it gets out of control, then you're going to stop. And I, I, I've had before where I put them in and take them out and I didn't like doing that. So I, I kind of changed that process, but um, I had a system and also you had to, you know, move that gun up on that rest you know, after you discharged the round and you put the new round in and you put it up there, I'd always slide the, the gun back up so it met the stop up in front. So that was all part of it. Well, we were doing FTR over there in Montana. So I was trying to teach him that same process with a bipod, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure you move it forward. He had to, you know, open the action, put the new one in, get the gun forward, all that stuff, and get on the scope, spotting scope. So we went through the cycle for a full day. And then the, the second day, uh, we were shooting five shot groups what we were shooting mm -hmm. right we started off at 100 went to 200 went to 300 and we after we shot the remaining parts at 300 the next day we went back there and i said kevin this is what we're going to do we're going to i'm going to treat you like you're shooting a match so he gets a <clears> feel <throat> for what it's like because he had no idea what to expect so you know i'm you know i go going for record blah 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 and um he's all set and you know one on two on three on all that kind of stuff and he had no one pulling targets you know, I had, I have these uh -huh. targets that I created, excuse me, targets created, and they're basically a 300 yard target uh, X ring. So that's what I have it set out there. And he shot, believe this or not, <laughs> I thought it was amazing. He shot a 216, and uh, he's never shot and matched. Wow. The kid can shoot, he just doesn't have like the, the equipment to go out there and do it. He works so hard all the time because he's, you know, he's in Montana. He's works in this lumber yard thing, you know, that he just, isn't, he's, he's always constantly working. I said, you got the skill. You just need to get out there and do it. And I, he's just gonna have to find time to do it. But um, there's, I can't think of anybody else I'd rather see my equipment go to than him. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's good, man. That's good. good yeah, stuff. but I still kept one. I got, you know, the one I sent to that FTR one I got. That's my seven millimeter. That's that RSOM. And um, mm -hmm. I have two stocks, F open, so I can still do the F open. I still have all the powder, all the brass, all the stuff, and primers, all the stuff, so I can still shoot. I fiddle with it, you know, because I really enjoy it, but I know I can. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you tore it up, man. You tore it up for a long time. You. It hurt. What else can you say, man? You tore the hell up. <laughs> and then we went to. Uh, to Ireland. Well, I showed up anyways. <laughs> I showed up. You know, I mean, I was there. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I never ran away from it. That's for sure. But, um, I didn't know you. I mean, I kind of knew of you, but I didn't know you. And, right. uh, this, remember Brian Odie, he's the one that's like, oh, yeah. let's go, man. And, and I'll tell you my F class story at uh, uh, my US F class story at some point, how I joined the team. But it was pretty much Mike Downey going, You're joining the team. And oh man, I'm not good enough. He goes, Yes, you are. You're joining the team. And he, he says, Let me call you back. And then he called me back and he says, Tryouts are this day. You better be there. <laughs> that, that's literally Mike. How he I, told me about I you. <laughs> yeah, he, he, had, he, had, he had told me about you. He told me, He said, you know, Eric can shoot and all this stuff, and he can be on the U.S. team and all that. It's great, man. Just get him over here. So, so, so then, you know, we're in Ireland, right? And uh, yeah. I end up at this bed and breakfast. Bob Mead had to go get me from the airport because I was stuck at the airport. I mean, and Bob Mead goes and gets me, right? And I go to this bed and breakfast with the with the TR team is right. Like I didn't know. I was kind of late to the game, right? And I don't know anybody, right? This is where I'm meeting everybody, right? And I get to this bed and breakfast and the entire TR team is there. No F open shooters. I don't know anybody. I mean, I know some people, right? But Nagel was there. Don Nagel was there. And then everybody's talking about like, well, tomorrow we're going to load these vans and blah, blah, blah. Because they had rented these vans, right? And Nagel goes, you can come with me and take. And remember he had this little focus or whatever little car we had. Oh, yeah. Oh, and... And he's like, no, you can just ride with us. And uh, 
you know, we got in a little car and he goes, we gotta go get Tate and we went to go get you. And then it was like the, the most fun days ever for the next <laughs> I mean, 10 days. Time. You, <laughs> you, me and Don Nagel piled into this little car. Yeah. Oh my God, what an amazing time. And we drove everywhere. Time, if it wasn't for but, Don, we would not We would never saw all the stuff we saw. <laughs> I know. I remember Don's he took like, off that side road. Over here. He'd go down that dirt road and just took <laughs> off. I go, where the hell is he going to go? You know, you know, and then everything's backwards anyways, <laughs> right? Then, you know? Yeah. And yeah, then he, I remember that, that when we got to the hotel, you're like, I get out, Rex. I was in the front. Let right. you get in. Like, no, no, no. You get in the front. And then you guys hand me a map. And they're like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the co-pilot. I'm in freaking Ireland. I have no idea where I'm. So back there in the back, and Don yeah. Nagel's driving, and I'm trying to make sense of this map that we have. <laughs> oh, the shit was upside down. Yeah, it was amazing. It was and, so much uh, fun. Oh, it was a good time. It was a damn good time. Yeah, that whole. That oh, whole, it was such a good time. Yeah, I, I was going to tell you that that shot. Um, well, you remember how the wind was blowing, right? And it, it was. I remember I got on the oh. line. And um, as a matter of fact, oh, going back, the very first shot that I ever took there was during our practice. We got it on the line. I set my gun on the ground. And Murphy, you know, they had to try to have all our guns synced and stuff. And so Murphy had taken right. his, Murphy had just gotten done shooting. And and Bob says, okay, Tate, get on the line, you know. So I get on the line. And give me, like, you know, put two and a half left on your gun or whatever the hell it was at the time. And I put it on there. Shot an X. First shot out of the thing. I thought, man, damn. Now, I, for my very first shot in at that new range in England or in Ireland was an X. I you nailed that thing. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. Wow. I was kind of proud of that. You know, this my very first shot there at the at England or Ireland was an X. Well, we go and shoot the match. We're doing all that stuff. And we're you know whatever match that we're shooting, and uh, on whatever day and and the wind is like, I went down and took my that wind gauge thing I had. And I stuck it up by the flight took a picture you know it's in that book yeah. it was a 20 mile an hour wind it wind was just blowing but it was it was so then i walked back you know when it was my turn to shoot and i get on the ground and the flags are you know they're yeah you know doing that thing. you know they're they're trying to find a way out they want to get the hell out of there and so i'm and but i look when i looked down the line it wasn't just like uh you know at the 800 yard line or the six it was all the way down I mean, every flag looked like it wanted off the pole. And I thought, you know, God, so I go, so I looked at my chart. I had a chart with all this wind stuff on it. And I remember I put nine and three quarter minutes left on that gun. That's what I dialed on. I never forgot that. I almost spun it. <laughs> I, and I, and I got on the ground, my very first shot, cold bar, bingo. And I shot an X. Now I would like to say it was a pinwheel. I can't remember because I'll remember when it came up, it was a V, you know, they had V's yeah, there. Yeah. It came up a V and I, and I remember thinking, you know, like, Jesus Christ, did you just see what just happened here? You know, I, you know, I was trying to look for that guy. I was looking for the guy that had that microphone. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, come over here. Give me that. Thing. You know, then I want to go, Hey man, cease, cease fire. A ceasefire. Let's get a ceasefire. I want everyone to take your spotting scopes and swing to target 36. Swing to target 36. Uh, swing to target. Yeah, I was like, can you yeah, just take a look at that? That's a oh, B, brother. You know. Yeah, I want to call a ceasefire on that, you know. And I know the guys in the pit. Hey, I know the guys in the pit had to say, because everyone knows the wind was going just, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, it was. I mean, 93 quarters, and I shot a V, cold four. And I know the guy pulled the target down. He had to say, he just shot a V. You know what I mean? Yeah, How do yeah, you it's, do that's it? impressive. It is impressive. Oh, man, I never forgot that. I, I'm yelling, cease fire. People are telling me, shut up. You know, I'm, you know. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was, that was probably the greatest shot I've ever made in, in that condition. I, you know. I almost wanted to bronze the gun and everything and just go home. Just say, That's it. I quit, man. <laughs> oh, man. 
So we had a great time, that's for sure. Oh my god! Remember, we used to go to all these all these pubs and then just drink a beer, and then oh, never had autograph and we signed him. Well, remember me we and Nagel, me and Nagel would convince everybody. Nagel started it, and then of course I had to I had to be a good wingman and 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 and. Uh, yeah. Remember, he kept saying that you were the famous American shooter, and then we convince oh, yeah. all the, we guy. convince all these local people that you were yes. just this amazing American shooter, and, <laughs> and they come oh, out and ask you for autographs, and and that you're gonna guy. see them on TV in a couple of days. You're gonna regret it. And yeah. you remember we got off that bus? Remember they brought us to the bus? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they brought us to the bus. This is where this whole thing started from. The world famous shoot. We get off the bus, and I'm walking down the beach line there and um this guy comes up to me and he points and he says hey he goes you're that world famous shooter and i said i'm looking like what i'm looking around like what are you, who are you kidding he says i know who you are i see your name tag you're that world famous shooter i said this is what i told him i said sir you you must got me mistaken for somebody else because i said it you you obviously didn't see me shoot the southwest nationals because i said i sprayed him over there that's what I told them. You know, I mean, that was the first time they announced it with the Southwest Nationals. They said, hey, the guy on 25, get that 14 off the line, you know. So, so, uh, but he says, no, no, I seen your, he says, I seen your name tag. I know who you are. And I said, oh, whatever. So then he takes me over to that lady who was that relative of that famous yeah, shooter. Yeah, the guy that the, shot it. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think I remember his name, but anyway, she, she says, yeah, this is his relative, his great granddaughter or whatever. And she wants a picture with you. So then, you know, then it just was a world famous shooter. And then that's where it all started. Next thing I know, I'm getting all these pictures taken. And then remember when we were in city hall, remember we were in city hall. Well, that same guy after that pro Tim mayor guy was giving his speech and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm standing by Murphy in the back. I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to the background. <laughs> trying that to same guy sees me. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to say in the background, just, you know, because you got, you got all these other, you know, big famous guys around and all that stuff. And I'm just a shooter, you know, I'm just, you know, a little guy from California, you know, and, you know, who legally has a gun according to our rules right here. But at any rate, uh, I'm over there hanging out by Murphy and that guy standing by that pro Tim guy, at mayor, uh, of Ireland, and he says, he says she's pointing right at me, and I looking over my shoulder like, is, he, is there someone behind me? And I go, me? And he goes, yeah, you, 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 come here, come here. And I go, uh, okay. So I, you know, you know, you're kind of representing the country, right? <clears throat> so I go over there, and I'm gonna be a nice guy. I go, yeah, what can I do for you? He says, I want to get a picture with you and the, with the mayor guy. That's how that whole thing happened. I didn't <laughs> ask for it. You know, I, I was trying to stay away from everything. <laughs> He, he, that gentleman just wanted that picture with me and that mayor. And the next thing I know, they stuck me over there. And then the mayor guy says, uh, get this other guy involved. So then there's three of us. And then you saw the, the, all the shots that went off. And it was like walking the red carpet. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, that guy, you know and it was very nice of him and everything. But I was, you know, I was thinking there's a lot bigger names around here than me. I can guarantee you that you oh, know, in this man. film. That was, that was that's a, a good that's how that all happened, but uh, that was a, what a fun trip, you know. And they treated us like gold out there, didn't they? Oh my God, amazing, amazing! I want to go back to Ireland. It, it, it was such a such a great trip. Just oh man, yeah. everything about it, the people, just amazing. Yeah. Uh, if, if, what, I, again, I'm gonna tell you something about England. It, Eric, go make it make it happen. You, yeah. You talk about it. How you talk about cheering we don't come close when they chair a shooter over there they got the band they put the guy up the band marches and they take him to every one of the houses and they get him they get him wiped out he's just drinking at every one of them and they, oh, they, really? they fire a cannon they fire a cannon off like every hour on the hour so it's they a put big him deal on a chair thing. right and they carry him put him on a chair and carry him <clears throat> google it google a video you'll see what i mean it's nothing like i mean not i'm not taking anything away from spirit of america but when but when you see what they do over there, I mean, it's just wow and um, very impressive. I mean, it's I'm so glad I got to experience that because that's what a range, you know. Yeah, just, I uh, interviewed uh, I interviewed Gary Costello about a couple of days ago. Yeah, who won the world championship in 2009, and he. Uh, oh, I know he Gary. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he was he there. told me his whole oh, no, side of the right. story. Well, yeah, that's how he won. <laughs> No, 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 yeah, no, no, but I mean, I remember, yeah, I remember seeing yeah, him yeah, talking okay. to him, so yeah, but, but, I was uh, thinking USA, yeah. I was thinking USA. No, no, uh, 2000 world champion, I interviewed him a couple of days ago, and uh, he told me pretty much his side of the story of being in, in there, because, I mean, he won the whole thing, right? And, yeah, what do you say? Uh, it's it's impressive, it's, it's, I'm not going to tell you, Tate, <laughs> you're going to have to watch the interview. <laughs> oh, oh, you got a secret? <laughs> No, it's you know it's just, you know you know, Gary, say, you know Gary better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just the same same thing like you and I are doing. He, his side of the story of how the how the match went for him. You know what I mean from his yeah. point of view, which is obviously different. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, uh, all the history. I, I definitely go to and shoot there, Bisley for I sure. Do. It's on the bucket it. list for sure. We've been great friends ever since. It's it's. You've been sure. an amazing friend, uh, yeah. you know. I mean, and I've I've been a pretty good friend. I, and you know how I know because there's, I let you beat me a few times just just to kind of boost your ego. Oh you know? shit! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, no offense, no offense, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one on the just so, so it's out there. You know, when I got when I got diagnosed with cancer in 2016. Um, 2000 it was december 2008 2016 my kidney shut down completely right so i had no kidney function they put me in a dialysis for four months and they figured out after doing all that dialysis and stuff they it took them a while to figure out what was actually going on with me and um i should have died back then but at any rate um i i uh got off the dialysis. They found out that I had this really rare bone marrow cancer and three out of a million have it. It's really rare. But at any rate, uh, I had to take 2017 off because I did all that time to rehab. Um, 2018, I tried to go shoot that match over at Southwest and I couldn't shoot. I had to quit because I just didn't have the energy. And so um, I quit, uh, you know, moving the, I couldn't do the palm and that was out. You know? uh -huh. And I knew when I shot the 600, I shot the 600 earlier, I was in big trouble. And I said, that's when I knew I couldn't, there's no way I could shoot the Palma. I, I couldn't handle, I didn't have the, people don't understand it, but you just lose all your energy and your strength. And my, it also affects my nervous system, which I didn't find, I found out later, you know, if I got diagnosed, it, it affects my nervous system and my vision. So I'd have twitches and my legs would twitch, my hands would twitch. And that's where I found out where that came from. I didn't realize it until later, but um, but I could feel it coming, so I would never pull the trigger. And it actually started way back, back when we were in Ireland. When we were in Ireland, I had those issues, and I and but I would try not to pull the trigger because I could feel it coming. And um, so, uh, 2017, I'm off. 2018, I can't shoot. I go to Southwest. I can't shoot the six, so I pull out of that. I said, I'm not going to shoot the, uh, the what you call it, the Palma, because I figured I'll just shoot the thousand yard because it's one line. And I struggled to get through that thing, but for whatever reason, um, I won it. I, and I have, you know, amazing. You won this mid range. You won. You won the championship, right? Well, no, I won the mid range. I won the mid range. You I won the, the mid range. Yeah, you, you won the mid range. Two thousand sixteen. Okay, and, you know, that was two thousand sixteen. Okay. Yeah, that was two thousand sixteen. I I cleaned it. Oh, and, that's uh, right. You, you didn't shoot the palm, but you shot the long range in twenty eighteen, right? Because I had, because yeah, I shot the, I shot 2016 and I, I cleaned it. And uh, by the way, the only clean. Yeah. Yes. yes Thank Tate. you very much. Okay. So at any rate, uh, yeah. Just for the record, I think I was a ceasefire. 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 Yeah. Ceasefire. Yeah. <laughs> so then I get diagnosed. Then I get diagnosed with cancer uh, after after that match in December. Mm -hmm. So that I missed 2017, I come back in 2018 and I tried to shoot this 600, but I struggled. I got out of there. So I knew the pommel was out. So I just stayed in my trailer and then I came back and shot the thousand and I ended up winning the thousand. And uh, you spanked, that's when I decided. You beat us all. You spanked well, I had one, well, The whole thing is I had one foot in the grave and one on the line, in all <laughs> honesty, because I, I, I couldn't, I was surprised I even got through that match. And it you was won. so hard. You well, it took, it, but it took the fun out of it, Eric, to be honest. It was such a, yeah. it was more of a, a conquest. It wasn't fun. It was just me getting pissed off. 
interesting. Yeah. But you spanked us all. So. That hurt. But at any rate, um, great memories. And um, yeah, I, would, I, mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know. So after 2011, because you know how it is, right? You kind of get that burnout a little bit, right? You go to all these oh, matches, you go to these big matches, and just so, especially so the worlds. It's so hard to, to, and then, so then what you and I came up with, jokingly or whatever, just you and I would always shoot against each other, right? We came oh, up sure. with that just yeah, shooting yeah. against each well, other. Well, that was your idea. You had to, yeah, you've got some BS going on in your stuff. <laughs> you know, you'd go, it's a thousand yard match and I beat you at a thousand. What's the aggregate? I go, what are you talking about? You can't, what are you, I feel like we're playing eight ball. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing, like anyway, you're, you're picking about, and choosing whatever you're ahead at. No, and then, you're talking you're, about eight, no, you're, no, here's the other one. <laughs> then I'm at home. I get this thing in the mail. Comes for you. This was after the 2000 so what was it? or whatever what, the hell it was. I, I Some match. You, you send by, me. I beat you well, by no, one. No, no, Yeah, I got the Go shirt. Tell, I still got it. I got it hanging in my story. closet. Tell the story. I can't have any picture of that thing. It was cracking me up. He sends me that thing, and I look at it. And it says, we tied scores on the ag. But but you had uh, beat me by one X, so you sent me an X and said you need this one, something like that. <laughs> I kept I it. Took I took a target. <laughs> I, 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 so, so always competing against each other. And I beat yeah. him. We tied down to the point, but I beat him by one X on the aggregate. I mean, literally, <laughs> we're just tied, and I got him by one X. So <laughs> I come home. Oh I, take, I take an F-class target. I cut out the X. I sign it, and I put on there. Here's the here. I said, "Here's the X that you needed to beat me, yeah. or something like that." And I mailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the score sheet. With, with the, score the score sheet. sheet. And I said, "Circled, highlighted." Yeah, with the score sheet. Yeah, and you highlighted. And I had to laugh because I said, "What are you talking?" I said, "This is what I told you." I said, "You know what? You better get on the phone and get hold of Michelle and see if she can get that thing pulled off the internet because if you look at it, I've got like." You know, third, first, second, second, third match winner. You've got like fifth, fourth, and that's it. <laughs> but you beat me on the, you tied on the ag. But I, I, agree. I said, I beat you by like, one X on the ag. Well, yeah, I, I beat you by one X on the ag. Have the ag. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the thousand yard. You know, we shoot the thousand yard match. We shoot the thousand yard match because we want the long distance. But then you go, hey, you know what? Let's let's throw in the palma. Well, the palma is a tune up for the thousand. I mean, you can have the palma. The palma is like a, just a warm up to get you ready for the thousand, man. Who are you kidding? You know, I, I was like, oh, what? Oh my god! I, I'd rather win the. Th I want to win the thousand because that's the that's where it's all at. But oh. you know, I hear one more thing. John Brewer told me this. He told me this, and oh, I got to hear this John Brewer story. We can't we can't go just yet. You got to hear this. Story. Yeah, I know. Hammer down. Hold on. Okay. Brewer tells me. God rest his soul, a great guy. He says to me, let me tell you something, Tate. He said, this is regarding Palma. He says, eight and nine is foreplay. It all comes down to a thousand. And he's right. Yeah. It is. And um, me and this is during the tryouts. Now, this is 2008. 2000, you know, it must have been 2008. It was the 2008 Nationals. Mm -hmm. And that was in Lodi. Um. Brewer's up on the line, and he decides he's going to change his scope out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's I'm what I. That, yeah, that's what that's what me and that's what me. You can ask Dean Morris this, because me and Dean Morris held the gun down on the. <laughs> we held this gun down. He says, "Hey, hey, come over here, Morris. Come over here. Hold this gun." He unscrews it, and me and me and uh, Morris look at each other like, "This is it." Brewer finally no no you know you're talking you know I'm looking like Brewer finally lost it and it's it's over you know he takes the scope off puts another one on screws it and he says it'll be okay he, I remember he loosened the scope he well he maybe readjusted it maybe uh -huh. that's what he did he must have readjusted it I just didn't say take it off he unscrewed it because I remember me and Morris looked at each other I said He's lost it, you know, like it's over. More uh we're gonna have to fill another spot, you know. And and he he twisted it down, I swear to you, he twisted it down and he got on the ground and he shot it. I was like, just did you just see what we just saw? You know? And 
did. One more thing he did. Um, he said, oh, I'll be fine. He goes, I'll, 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 I'll be fine. That's what he told me. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. Um, we're, I'm shooting like in Wisconsin. I'm shooting like four or three, and he's shooting on four, right? And we get down on the ground, and uh, John shoots, and my target goes down, right? We're in ciders. Mm-hmm. So he's going off on it, man. He's banging this thing away. And I'm letting him do it. I just sat there like this. And, I, you know, I had 30 minutes, right? So I just kind of sat like that. I let him put about five, six rounds on that target. On your and target. I, so he's close yeah, fired. Yeah. Don't my target, yeah. Mm-hmm. The target's coming down, going a lot of action going on there. You know, he's got an eight. Boom, he's back. He's 10. He's centered up. He's starting to get, things are starting to go good, you know. <laughs> and I said, hey, John. And he and he's like, what? He looks over at me, you know. I said, you want to shoot your own target, you know? <laughs> Whoa, you know. So funny. <laughs> oh, he just, you know, such a nice guy anyways, but he pulverized my target, you know, but um, it was just funny because he was, you know, he just got so locked down and one target left that he just never got off it, you know, and the, I let him <laughs> get it. <laughs> the, uh, when I was in Ireland, 2011, we were in Ireland, uh, I got paired up with John Brewer. And I never met him before. Like I knew who he was, but I've never met him, right? But now I'm just the newest member of the U.S. Rifle Team. And like you said, it's like now all of a sudden all these like everywhere I look, it's all these freaking yeah, magnificent shooters that I've been reading it's about, great. right? And all of a sudden I'm yeah. they're everywhere. You know, there's there's a room like, hey, we're going to dinner, and I'm sitting there, the table just full of freaking all these celebrities and and just these just just yeah. high caliber shooters, right? So I get paired up with John Brewer, and we go to the pits first and you know two people pull the targets and the shot comes through and he literally puts his hand over the target and he looks for the hole like braille just looks for the because he can't see yeah. and i'm thinking of course i'm like no no I'll, I'll do it right so i took over and, and i started pacing the targets but i'm i mean honestly i'm thinking Oh my God! What's gonna happen when it, when it, when he has to shoot? You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, I mean I'm I'm I don't know I don't know I just know who he is. I know he's an amazing shooter, but I'm seeing him that he's he's literally feeling for the shot, can't see right, <clears throat> and I'm I'm worried. I'm like, what's gonna happen when we go back to the line? Right. Long story short, we go back to the line, right, and we shoot. <sighs> he shot like. 15 X's at 800, like just never left the center. Like just my right. jaws hits, it's on the ground. At 900 yards, I remember at 900 yards, they brought him the spotter. Because at 900 yards, with 15 shots, he hit the three inch spotter 13 times. Isn't that great? I, it was yeah. amazing, you know, he's such an amazing talking shooter. About I'm, I'm, I'm just, I got Literally there, there with my, my, my jaw on the ground because, it like I said, I'm I, amazing. Yeah, amazing. There's a lot of talent out there. Those guys, those all those guys are amazing. The, this is true, too. Uh, we're in England, Mike Downey. Um, I tell Mike, this is before we shot the Rutland, when we were just shooting the matches. I had a lot of eye problems, and um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. no one really knew this, but I couldn't see. And I told Mike, mm-hmm. Mike, I can't see the targets. And uh, he said, are you kidding me? And I said, no, I can't. But I said, you can't tell anybody because they won't let me shoot. But when I get on the ground, you know, and I can dial up my focus, I can see it. I just can't see when I stand there, everything's blurry. All the subjects, mm-hmm. you know, at that distance, you know, in, in England, there's a, um, there's a, there's the targets and then they have the, the scores, things, the, the target numbers are above and then uh, i think it's like every 10 targets there's a bigger marker so they're in groups of mm-hmm. they're in groups of 10 right so mm-hmm. mike would mike would this is how we could you can verify this with mike mike would drive me up to where i had to shoot and drop me off and he'd get out of the cart and he'd say okay tate you're the third big marker second the second one over right mm-hmm. so i would look at that big marker and i set my shit down <laughs> And I'd look at that, get it all dialed in, set up. And then once I focused, 
I was good to go. Yeah. But until then, but I said, don't you tell anybody, because if you tell them, they're going to say, we don't want him on the line, you know? Yeah. And what happened yeah. was I came back and we ended up winning, right? I shot really yeah. good on the Imperials that won the goal and um, all that stuff. It all worked out well, but I just had to get situated. We got back to the States. I went to uh, um, North Carolina, Butner. That's when they had the Nationals after he got back. And the, the, the gentleman that runs the uh, match over there and uh, uh, his wife, the guy that runs the match at Lodi. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you know Earl? What I'm talking about? Earl? Yes, his wife. Mm-hmm. She was shooting next to me. In my eyes, I was looking at the – was. we just gotten back from England shooting the Nationals. And I saw this big red like ball of fire roll across the line like at mm-hmm. 700 yards. And I thought, holy shit, what's going on with my sight? So I remember I got off the line. I told her, I said, hey, did you see that big ball of fire go across? Because my vision was yeah. – and she said – she looked at me like it's half nuts. She said, no. <laughs> and I thought, this is it, man. Well, I went back in November. I had my eyes fixed. I had, them, I had implants put in that mm-hmm. year. And I had them put uh, – Close vision. Uh, I I couldn't see when I before I got the surgery. I couldn't see the big E. That's the truth. I sat down and he did my eyes. Said I couldn't see the big E. So they took the uh, they gave me an implant on my right eye, which was for close because I wanted it for close because I knew that I could I could do my notes mm-hmm. and I knew when I got on the scope I could dial for distance. I had my left <clears> eye for <throat> distance so I could look at the flags. <laughs> and if I had to use a spotting scope, I could adjust my, I did it all for shooting. Right. So right. I had, I had my visions like this. And so after I got those implants in, it was almost like cheating. I mean, I've never seen colors so good. I've never uh, seen, I thought, Holy crap, look, I can see great. You know, I didn't, you don't realize how bad your vision is until you put glasses on. Right. Right. You know, when you're, when your vision mm-hmm. is going, well, I didn't realize that I got those implants and, um, man, I said, this is fabulous, you know? And then, then I got hit with another truckload of stuff. But at any rate, uh, that's kind of how that all worked. I was surprised I got through England like that. Mike was good about it. Mike never said nothing. And I said, I, I can't believe that. But um, I was okay once I got on the ground and got, got situated. Yeah. But I couldn't oh, see. For <laughs> I sure. couldn't see. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Man, take, what this a, has what been a, amazing, man. What a run. This has been amazing. Hey, Thank I'm – I'm glad I got this chance to speak with you, Eric. I hadn't seen you last time I saw you. You came down here. We went to Catalina. That was fun. Oh yeah, that was fun, man. That was that was a good trip. It was a real fun trip. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, I wish you and your family nothing but the best, obviously. And I'll see you at Southwest. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up there. I'm not gonna compete. I oh, I couldn't get in anyways. How do you get into those matches anymore? <laughs> How do you get into it? You know, I got I to tell you, we, you can't go this yet because I got a couple of things I got to say. Because, you know, this is what I always want to do. I always want to shoot against the best guys out there, right? I want to see these guys. I want to meet them because they're all great people, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you you know, you want to shoot with them. You want to meet them and you, you pick their brain and let them help you out. And maybe there's something you can get from it, you know, or whatever. Or watch how they do things. Mm-hmm. And the way that system is set up, some of these guys, they don't they can't make it. You can't get in because you can't type fast enough or the thing is just, you know, they got eight people doing all at once for them. And then until, you know, however they work it out, you know, they bombard it or whatever. I don't have that kind of stuff. And, and I just feel sorry for the ones that, you know, they those guys should be there because they're part of the history of that, of that, of the game. And the other people, they're, they're role models and they're, they're, uh, they motivate the other younger ones. And to, now, you know, now they're home because their internet's slow. Because <laughs> they have slow internet. Well, it's just yeah. And the other <clears> thing <throat> is, is that thing that you're doing that V competition thing? Yeah, V two. That you know what? I think that's great. I I, I really think that's a, a good thing you got going on. And I and I uh, in I in England, when you shoot the when you shoot the um, uh, imperial matches, they put three on a mound with that same, that same thing of 45 seconds. So you take one shot, you don't shoot again for a minute and a half, up to a minute and a half. Wow. So, you know, you got to be on your game. And so doing what you're doing helps those guys get ready because you the chasing the spotter kind of goes out the door when you got to wait a minute and a half. Yeah. You know, it'd be, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and even in your, even in your instance, you got 45 seconds. So, but you still need to, 
read to win. So I think that to, to improve, this is my own personal opinion, um, like at the Nationals, Southwest Nationals and so forth, I think it'd be great if they took like the last day and had pair firing and um, let you do that because, you know, you can chase the spotter that first day if it's there and if conditions, yeah. you know, you can you can pull up and shoot and do, you know, not chase the entire match because you can't do that and expect to win. Just chase the spotter 24 so that ain't going to fly. You're going to you're going to shoot decent scores, but you're not going to you're not going to win because everyone will be doing that. Right. Right. So so you need to have in that second day, if you're doing pair firing, it's going to teach. It's going to force you to learn how to read the wind. And it's also going to give the guys a chance to do know how to win, catch up for the guys that maybe had a bad string because, you know, they got a good one and you didn't get a good one. But now you got pair firing to help balance out the. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And in the, in the same respect, you're helping out, you're helping out all the shooters to learn how to be forced to read their wind. And for those that do go to England and do shoot in the Imperials on the U S team that do go, they're going to be better at it. Yeah, so when, once you leave the U S it's pretty much pair fire. Yeah. I just think it's a good thing. And um, I, I love that. That's the way it was over there. And I had a, my own little system, how I shot that pair firing and it worked for me. And that's one reason why I think I did okay out there. Cause I never chased a spotter out there. You know, what I would do is I would shoot my shot and wherever I hit at, I would leave my, I would leave my scope set to where I aimed, but I would put a mark on my sheet where it went. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You would plot. So on I it. knew where the impact, <clears throat> I, I was basically plotting it kind of, but I let my scope stay where my point of aim was. And I, then I put a mark on my sheet that I had, I made up a sheet with the, you know, the rings in it uh -huh. where it hit. And I left that there so that I could, then I could score when I had to score. But I also, when I did that, I took a look at the wind, right? So I knew what wind I had when I shot in. So then I would let the other guy shoot and then I would, you know, score him or whatever. Then I had a break and then it'd be whatever, it'd be my turn to shoot. And when it had to be my turn to shoot, then I would look at where, where I knew where my gun was at. I just had to look at my sheet to see where my impact was so I could make that a movement. I could make that adjustment to chase a spotter. And then I would dictate it based off the wind. Did it go up or down? Right. Yep. Then I would make that little adjustment and I'd take my shot at it. And it was, it never really failed me. I mean, you know, I'd have to be really off on the wind call, but I could keep track. I didn't have to like have a big long list of stuff. It was shot to shot to shot, but my shot was marked on the, you know, my scope. I never moved it and it was on paper. Then I would make my chase the spotter move, center it up and go, do I have more wind or less wind? And then I'd make a call. Yep. And that's how I shot that Imperials and it worked. I think I came in 12th overall in the AG in, um, in, the, in the 14. I shot really well on that thing. I was I was proud of how that went. And um, that pair firing is, a, I mean, that's how I would do pair firing. If I was yeah. to shoot in your, if I was to shoot in your match, that's what I would do. And um, I wished I could shoot in it. My, my, my vision's bad. My nervous system's a mess. You know, it's just, it's, it's you know, it just stinks. But you know what? Ah, man, you, you you had a hell of a run. <laughs> still, you still got you're still going, man. Don't worry about it. You're still going. Still well, I'm going. here. I'm. Th let me tell you something. I'm very satisfied and blessed, and I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, if if, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'll still take the cancer. I'll still take all of it because I'd rather have it than have my kids have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, nope. Greg. I understand, man. I understand. Uh, uh, that that would that would crush me. That would crush me, but me having it, shit, that's nothing. He's gonna have to dig. It's gonna have to dig deeper than that to get me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, man. I know it. Tater, man, I appreciate it. You've been an incredible friend, and still are. Uh, every now and then, I fly over to Huntington Beach and just drop by, and you're like, "What the hell are you doing here?" I'm like, "Did he see you?" <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny. I told when you came out that one time, we went to Catalina's. I told Downey because Downey came out once and stayed with me and we went surfing, right? Mm -hmm. So I told him next time he comes out, we'll go to Catalina because I can't leave him hanging, you know. Take a look. And you bought that expensive water, remember? That he oh, you Jesus. Like he oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that about? You know, I got bad kidneys, so I can't we got, do all this other stuff. We got a bottle of water, literally a bottle of just a bottle of water and they bring it out and, and they're showing it to him like this like if it's in wine and it's like eight, it's like eight dollar water it was just yeah, a, like, just yeah. a bottle of water 
this water's so good, I don't even got to put ice in it. You know what I'm saying? So we don't even put ice in it. You got so mad. <laughs> oh, man, it was amazing. Take, <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate you doing this. Have a safe trip. Um, and yeah. uh, maybe we'll do this again when you get back, man. I know you got a ton, ton of stories, so. Oh, my goodness. What a memory <sighs> lane. But at any rate, I'll see you at Southwest in 22. Hey, one well, more thing. We'll probably gonna do, do this again. World? Are they doing the worlds or what? They pushed it back one more one more time. What's that? So now we're twenty the world. So now we're looking like 23, 23. Oh, 23, but it's South Africa still. Yeah. As far as as, as of right now, it is. So yeah, okay. we're just waiting. Well, I'll see you. Uh, okay. Either way, I'll see you and I'll see you in Phoenix. I'm well, gonna we're come gonna up and bring my this again. We're gonna have I'm to gonna do bring this my again. camera take pictures of you guys. You know what I mean? I'll yeah. take some photographs and all that kind of stuff and and um visit you know uh, you know i miss it but it, it's what it is and uh, but it doesn't mean you guys can't uh, you know i enjoy watching you guys do it yeah yeah what it's a, fun, what a life it's fun. Yeah, I would all right. thank you take, good luck to you Eric. take care man family. all right, right bye-bye oh wait i didn't record any of this hey you mind doing it all okay. over again i didn't, I didn't record uh, i'm not very good at that <laughs> oh. see you man <laughs> wouldn't that be take something care. if you did that <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. How do I shut this up? I don't even know how to shut it off. I'll do it. Bye. And